and we're back. So, all right, so where were we? I wanted to ask you, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, obviously Americans know, you don't have to, they don't have to be told that we have problems with the current system. I mean, ev every American, I think, can see there are problems with the economy, with jobs, with, um, you know, uh, corrupt banking, um, corrupt government. I mean, everybody on every side of every spectrum can see these things. What would you say, um, what would, do you think Americans need to know or understand that they don't? Hmm. Um, you know, that, that's, that's an interesting uh, sort of, you know, hypothesis you put forth. Because in a way, I think that was less true even two months ago before mm -hmm. the Occupy movement, the 99% movement. So the mm -hmm. fact that we are now having uh, the conversation's changed, a stronger right? conversation, the yeah. conversation certainly changed. Uh, we're all more facile in that conversation with the, you know, what is the problem? It's inequality. What, you know, yeah. is a result of that. So, so kudos to them for that, mm -hmm. uh, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where the, uh, you know, so one of my working hypotheses is that we're seeing a convergence of basically angry people in America, right? Mm -hmm. First, you could have said it was the Tea Party, and you could say it's the Occupy Movement. You know, at the end of the day, it's not particularly they're red, angry. it's not necessarily <laughs> blue, but they're, they're, what, they're sh what they share is anger. Right. They share anger that the system isn't working. Right. Now, yeah. You know, if you sort of just get out of bed in the morning and, you know, don't go read some books or talk to your neighbors or have some, you don't have a particularly maybe well-formed critique of what's wrong, let alone a vision for what to do about it. But there is a sort of pit of their stomach, intuitive sense that's sweeping the country that something's just broken. Right. Now, there are two places where that falls out. So, uh, well, so some people sort of would say, all right, it's really business, big business, Wall Street, the way our economy works, that's what's broken. Some would say, it's really government that's broken. Now, I think mm -hmm. most actually agree with both. So the sort of, you know, mm -hmm. on extremes, they would, but, but most people think it's both. You talk to yeah. Tea Party folks, you talk to Occupy Wall Street folks, they agree, you know, look, Wall Street is rigged, it's a rigged game, and they own government, yeah, which say, is why government built not. Where the real breakdown then occurs, Bruce, is what you do with that. Mm -hmm. Because some people, right, and again, I think it sort of crosses partisan lines, some people say, well, the answer is you have to rein in business and you have to make our economy work for working people and for entrepreneurs. Right. And that the only, if not the primary tool for doing that is government regulation, rules, restrictions, putting government back in the hands of people so that government can be a, a check and a balance to the market. Right. Then there are others, again, I think they cross spectrums, mm -hmm. uh, but there are others who say no, the solution is actually to, you less know, regulation. less regulation, mm -hmm. less government, less restrictions, mm -hmm. uh, and to let the market sort of, that in fact the reason that these problems exist is because government has been intervening unfairly in the market. Mm -hmm. So that's the next step in the conversation, is, is really parsing that out. I, yeah. I'm a firm believer <laughs> that it's mm -hmm. the former. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, in fact, the reason we're in the predicament we're in is because we deregulated business, we deregulated the finance industry in particular, yeah. and let it do whatever the heck it wanted, and it did, mm -hmm. and it destroyed us. Yeah. Um, but we have to have that conversation next as a country, and I, I think mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, it's worth having. I was thinking about this, this very thing this morning, because I knew we were going to talk today, and I was thinking, um, it's maybe it's just my perception, but that the word regulation is key because I was actually I was talking to somebody a couple of days ago, another guest, and we were talking about that, and she says, "Well, this is maybe where we differ about regulation and free market and things like that." And I thought I was thinking about this this morning. Regulation, it seems to me, might be a word like love. It's not always <laughs> appropriate. It depends on how it's used, and I think it might be that. Everybody really agrees, well, not everybody, but the majority agrees, they're just defining the word regulation differently. Because even the most liberty-minded libertarian is for regulation when it comes to breaking up monopolies. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you mean by regulation, right? I think that when, uh, when we talk about corruption, you know, crime and corruption, mm -hmm. where it's obvious that it's a corrupt, you know, Thief, thievery that's going on, that everybody agrees with that. If you call that regulation, that's mm -hmm. you know enforcement of uh, criminal law. Really, is what it should be. So, but if yeah. you call that regulation, I think everybody agrees with that. I mean, you know, I do think there's a nomenclature issue here, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's sort of in the way we have. I would compare it maybe less to love, more to government, right? That <laughs> some people hear the word government uh, and they think of, 
you know, the collective, the thing that we all invest in to make sure that our economy, our society, the world around us works fairly responsibly and accountably to all of us. Mm -hmm. Other people hear the word government and they think of that thing I pay for that helps those people. Right. right. It's, it's actually something that's just very like much tax. removed just, from you. Right. Well, and, and that's part of, you know, it's interesting because people, um, uh, you know, poll after poll shows, right, that people support taxes mm -hmm. when they believe the things they're getting benefit them. Yeah, they don't like yeah. taxes when they believe that they're helping other people. Now, right. of course, the vast majority of our taxes go toward things that actually benefit us all. Mm -hmm. you know, roads, uh, public safety, public health, uh, the military, and all these things, right? Yeah. But there's this myth in the way that people who are against government have attacked government is by you know, focusing on the food stamps or the welfare, or the things that sort of help those right. other people. Of course, letting, us, letting alone the fact that in this recession, a record number of people are relying on food stamps, including <laughs> formerly middle class people. So, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's something about the words and what they mean to people. Regulation has a, you know, sort of tight fisted, you know, fra framing to it, right? Yeah. Uh, even though, by the way, you know, uh, groups after groups, I mean, clusters of small businesses have come out and said that actually regulation is not their problem. And, and in fact, the fact that the United States regulates some of its industries is what gives us a competitive edge mm. abroad, right? People mm. are going to buy lumber, for instance, from mm -hmm. U.S. manufacturers because they know it is free of certain toxins and things. And that gives them a competitive right. edge against non-regulated markets. So mm -hmm. bearing that in mind, I actually think call, talking about safety, uh, safeguards and standards right. may be the better way to go because we're mm. really not talking about stopping companies from doing things. Right. What we're talking about is making sure that what they do ethically. is ethical. It yeah. doesn't hurt people. Doesn't, right. I mean, you know, yeah. we don't want people to pollute the air. Yeah, you exactly. know, we've, we've been there. We've done that. We had record asthma. It was bad. It, you know, I mean, yeah. right? And it's not like we don't want them to because we're mean to business. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to because we don't want our kids getting sick. That's what I mean <laughs> by people hear the word regulation. And I think they literally have... Uh, <laughs> It, uh, like a different mean. It's like I always say, you know, labels and expectations. We talk about relationships. You know, we're going to be okay. Let's say, well, let's go steady. Well, I'll be your boyfriend. You may be my girlfriend. Then, well, boyfriends do this and do this and do oh, this and don't yeah. do that. Like we hear a word, and and we each have a different meaning. So when when some people hear regulation, they think standards and safeguards and ethics and things mm -hmm. like that. And I think other people hear regulation and they think it means. Uh, blocking uh, certain markets, you know, bl uh, preventing people from trading and things like right. that, which I, I think is the opposite of what we want. We really want... No, and those who've attacked, who've attacked sort of government infrastructure as it relates to the private sector have done a very good job of masquerading their concerns about mm -hmm. safe, safety, uh, safeguards and standards, yeah. masquerading their concerns as concern for small business and little business, where in fact... We know uh, that, they, that deregulation, that getting rid of all these safeguards and standards, has disproportionately helped mm. big business to get bigger and bigger and bigger while making it harder right. for small businesses and new businesses to compete. Right. And, and that is the engine of yeah. our economy. I mean, most of our jobs are created by small businesses. I mean, it's mm. not, you know, so if we know sure. all these things. Yeah. Uh, I think it's both. It's a mixture of, of people honestly having a different uh, understanding of what it means and also a lot of disingenuous uh, manipulation of terminology to say, uh, you know, to call it this to, just to influence people to vote against it or whatever things yeah. like that. There's so much manipulation and dishonesty. When you're talking about people, <laughs> a little bit of that going around. So when you talk, also when you talk about government and... Uh, you know, government and ba big business, corporations, banking especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, some people think it's this, some people think it's that. And I say it's inseparable, literally inseparable. I mean, completely incestuous, literally. Yeah. Like, the, you know, when, you, when the regulators in charge of overseeing this is the former CEO yeah. and he, he, he promotes his buddy, then he becomes the regulator. And then, like, it's literally they're all in one big bed. Yeah, uh, yeah people don't, <laughs> I mean, people don't, you know, we... we these aren't like the necessarily glamorous things to talk about. It's like, you know, because it's so many layers of possibly boring, you know, tedium. Like, mm -hmm. well, who fills out the paperwork that regulates the... Right. But, you know, we learned in the Gulf oil disaster that literally it was big oil company executives who would pencil in 
the answers <laughs> on the forms that the government overseers were supposed uh, to fill out, and the government overseers would go over them and pen. In ink, and then sign I mean, up. come on. Now, again, you can sort of look at that one of two ways. You can use that to attack government, you know, or you can use that to attack business. And I think the third path, which is where most Americans would fall, and I think are falling right now, as mm -hmm. most of the Tea Party and most of Occupy Wall Street as well, the third path is to say no. Look, there's government can work. Mm -hmm. The private sector can work. Yeah. We're not doing what it takes to make them work and right. thrive and create prosperity for everyone. We've let them, you know, sort of co-join mm -hmm. and be in cahoots uh, to enrich a very, very, very few and screw mm -hmm. the vast majority. Yeah. We've let it happen on our watch. Yeah. We're going to stop it now. Yeah. I think you're right. They... It, it really, it seems to me like the bottom line is a big, gigantic mirror that this is putting up in front of all of the American people saying, somebody here is not doing their job. The, the corporations are doing their job. They're just a machine, like software, to make money. I, corporations are not humans. They're obviously not people. Even before that issue, I've always said, corporations are just machines. You can't blame a corporation for not having morals and ethics. It's just a machine to make money, and it's doing it really well. It needs to be reined in, like a lawnmower machine with a blade on it. It has to be harnessed and framed and to do its job properly. Um, it's, it's just a machine to make money, and they're doing really well at that. The government, the politicians, well, they're doing really well. They're doing exactly what they're paid to do. <laughs> they're, they're bought and owned before they even run for election, and we know that. There's just corruption, and, and that's human nature. You, it's to be expected if, mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, if, you, if the system is set up like that. Yeah. Who's not doing their job in this picture is the American people. We have felt so powerless for so long. We, we are realizing like it's time for us to stop being apathetic Right. I mean, and also our attention span, like you were talking about the detail, the tedium of it. Mm -hmm. I always say, you know, if you put just one layer of complexity, much less two layers of complexity, people are like, oh, it's too complicated, I don't understand. You know, if it doesn't fit in a tweet, I don't get it. And you know what I mean? Like, we don't even remember who won American Idol last season or right. something. I mean, we, we have very short attention spans and one layer of complexity, and, oh, we don't understand. It was Scotty McCreary. Who? Who won American know. Idol? Oh, I <laughs> see, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really watch them much. Wasn't it? Anyway, Unless I think it was. I, I hope I got that right. <laughs> no, you're right. But, I mean, yeah. but, the, but it's, it's different from saying we can't, right? Right. Um, we are. And you know, yes, I would <laughs> I wouldn't absolve I wouldn't absolve leaders in business either. I mean, there's sort of you know. Yeah. You well, know, when they've committed of, crimes. It's kind of like saying, well, do you? Per no, no, no. But I just mean even for sort of general ethical standards, right? right. In other words. You, you know, there's a sort of reverse uh, of keeping up with the Joneses, which is sort of, you know, going into the gutter with the Joneses, mm -hmm. right? So it's sort of, it, it becomes this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy or reality or whatever, yeah. where it's like, oh, well, they're doing Everyone's that. Everyone's doing so it. So I should do that. So meanwhile, you know, it's like, do you blame any individual reality TV show producer for, you know, creating yeah. kind of socially destructive junk? Do you Speed just blame? Do you blame the yeah. zeitgeist? Do you? I mean, you yeah. know, it's sort of you can't just say, "Oh, it's, it's like your the fault," or it's not your fault. It's like, yeah. right? It's I like mean, the culture of Wall Street. That was their defense. Well, everybody was doing it. They were doing it worse than we were. Right, and that's, like, that's a, and a that's, that's half an answer. That's mm -hmm. half an answer, yeah. right? It becomes you know mm -hmm. ingrained and inculcated yeah. in a culture. Yeah. and individuals are still autonomous and responsible. In fact, mm -hmm. in a way, sort of psychologically, it's the equivalent of what we talk about when we talk about the government balancing out market, right? We talk right. about the collective, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. greater good, the common good, balancing the individual. So there's right. individual rights, freedom, autonomy, uh, responsibility, balanced with, uh, you know, what is in the greater interest, uh, you know, helping people do what they can't do themselves, helping the community do what it, what no one would do on their own, right? Mm -hmm. So you sort of balance those interests in the same way you balance individual responsibility for moral behavior with the sort of culture and what the culture allows, permits, endorses, etc. Right. So, you know, I mean, again, 30 years ago, the highest paid CEOs made about 40, 30, 40 times more than their lowest paid workers on average. Mm -hmm. Now they make about 300, 400 times more. Yeah. Now, is that individual CEO greed? Is it culture? Is it deregulation? Is it... It's all of them. All of the above, yeah. It's all of them. <laughs> say, yeah. And you know, totally. everybody can kind of point the finger, but mm -hmm. it's wrong. Right. And you know, the vast majority of Americans look at something like that and say that's that. wrong. Yeah. Thirty times more? Fine. Even I think I saw a hundred times more it was like fine, but come on. Yeah. You know? I think I saw a chart recently it was like I think if I remember right, it was like nine times more in uh, CEO compared to the average worker in Japan. And everything was pretty much single digits. 
until you get right down to the U.S. and there's like 497 times or some yeah. crazy number. Yeah. Everybody knows that's wrong. And especially when they get a massive bonus for doing something really criminal and driving the company into the ground and then leave. Right. Well, and yeah, I mean, and that's where it's like, wait a second, what? Oh my you know? gosh. Yeah, uh, you know. And, and others and are like, I, good for you. You got away with it. And again, it's not to demonize. You know, I think sometimes we have black and white conversations mm -hmm. in our country right now politically because we're so hyper-partisan and we don't talk about right. the complicated, messy gray in the yeah. middle. Yeah. It's not to say that a CEO, you know, running a Wall Street firm or a big business or, what, you know, is working hard. Of course they're working hard. I wouldn't want that job. Those are those are more than full-time jobs. We know it and they're complicated mm -hmm. and they had to work their way up and those are hard jobs. Now yeah. the question is, how much harder? And I mean I really want to like, you know, they should switch for a day or something, but how much harder is that person's job than, you know, a single mom who's on her feet all day, mm -hmm. you know, restocking at Walmart? Or their school she, teachers, or their or she, but like take line. that take that yeah. person working at Walmart full time working at Walmart. You still qualify for welfare and food stamps. Mm -hmm. So now, do I think that the CEO is working harder? I mean, in material terms, they harder. Maybe they're maybe they're more talented. Whatever you want to say. Even mm -hmm. if you buy all that, which is fair. Even providing more value. How and all that? much yeah. better are they? Are they working? Because in most of those discrepancies, if you're going from Wall Street, if you're going from Walmart, Walmart to Wall, to Wall Street, Street, you're actually <laughs> talking about. A, in some cases, a 1,200 time discrepancy, right? The right. average uh, starting salary for a Walmart worker is about 1,200 times less than, say, Lloyd Blankfein, who runs Goldman Sachs. Right. Now, is Lloyd Blankfein really working 1,200 times more? Is he 1,200 times better at what he, I mean, really? Like, really, just contemplate what that would mean. I couldn't mm -hmm. work 1,200 times more than I am now. So, right. you know, that's the conversation that we really need to put in some perspective. And it's the society's fault as well as the individual's. Right. And then, so there's that. I mean, they, you know, they may be, you know, stealing 1,200 times more money from the American public and the whole wiping out the middle class. Who knows? But then the other thing is, like, just a simple accountability. Like, even if that were theoretically justifiable, right, um, to take the money and you know when, like when they know the company is going bankrupt, sell all their stock in the last twelve months before they know the company is going bankrupt. I mean, that's just like insider trading. That's like, it's absolutely criminal. It's just unbelievable that. Um, I mean, it actually is believable because, like you said, you know, like I say, well, you know, government politicians, Washington, are just completely bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. It's just completely incestuous. We we have this concept of separation of church and state, but we don't have any concept of separation of corporation and state and um, banks, mm -hmm. which are the you know the most powerful corporations. And and we didn't even get to talk much about which one of the things I'm most interested in is the Federal Reserve, which is a private corporation that has this some for some bizarre reason has this exclusive monopoly to print U.S. money and then loan it back to us at interest, and it, it's completely private corporation, has no accountability. The government is, is like accountable to the Federal Reserve instead of the other way around. And, you know... Well, that's a longer conversation. Yeah, that's... A <laughs> but look, um, you know, there are problems. <laughs> and, there are, and this is why you're starting to see, like I said, more voters who are identifying not necessarily as red or blue, but angry. Yeah, uh, I agree. And, and they're coming across, you know, and sort of coming out in all different political stripes and varieties and so forth. Yeah. The fact is, uh, I just heard this the other day, it blew my mind, uh, that in one day, right, the mm -hmm. financial sector is producing almost more, you know, just by like, trading, just by buying and selling stuff. I mean, not even things, not even things, right? Just buying digits. and selling other... Electronic digits, other yeah. di Right, buying, yeah. investing in other people's investments and, you know, shorting other people's investments and blah, 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 are creating more wealth than virtually uh, an entire year's worth of production coming out of our manufacturing sector. I mean, the oh, proportion yeah. is, or maybe it's 30 times more than in a... But I mean, it's... I heard it's it was like we don't, we don't. Forty percent so of our GNP was financial that, services. On exactly <laughs> on top of that, uh, you know, not only are these these income discrepancies huge, mm -hmm. right? But all of our nation's quote unquote wealth, mm -hmm. which incidentally, the making of which is what bankrupt our economy, bankrupt our housing market. Right. But all of that isn't even making anything. Right. They're not actually shuffling it's digits not in a computer. It's not. It's not. They're not producing things. They're not producing mm -hmm. ideas. They're not producing. No, they're not. And, you know, I'll be damned. I think America's better than that. And mm -hmm. I think Americans are waking up and saying, hey, wait, 
we're better than that too. We're not going to be a country run by, you know, a few dozen people right. that benefits 400 people and shafts everyone else. It's just modern, high tech. You know, we're, we're so sophisticated at uh, coming up with new ways of doing things and so innovative. We've come up with the most brilliant scheme for modern electronic slavery by shuffling digits in computers and having the masses be poor and in debt. And we mm -hmm. use debt as a slavery mechanism. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't Ooh. quite go that far. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always very cautious about slavery metaphors because, mm -hmm. I mean, really, there's it's slavery not, is slavery. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, like yeah. the subjugation of African Americans as right. actual indentured servants in this right. country versus having a lot of debt. I really wouldn't draw that analogy, mm -hmm. but... I know where you're going with the metaphor, which is, you know, that, that people, are people two have or three been, jobs they and, have been, I mean, they have yeah. literally, and you can't, I was talking to someone the other day who filed for bankruptcy. Uh, I mean, just filed for bankruptcy. This was a, you know, solidly middle-class guy, has a family, had a good paying job, but it's like one thing after another. The economy is, it, the economy is actually set up so that someone like a Lloyd Blankfein, someone who's born into money, someone who, you know, has one of those, you know, top, 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 1% of the 1% of the 1% jobs, <laughs> mm -hmm. they barely have to do anything and they right. succeed. Right. And meanwhile, everyone else in this country is running as hard as they can, trying as hard as they can, you know, Just working and working and working and working, and water, right? still yeah. not able to succeed. Yeah. At, even, at even a reasonable level. Mm -hmm. it, it's, set, it's almost setting up. You know, they're, they may be too big to fail, but they're setting us up to fail. Yeah. Uh, totally. And it's, you know, it's oh, a from bad childhood. proposition. They're giving, you know, I got, a, I got my first MasterCard in the mail when I was 16, which was unbelievable. Ooh. And then, yeah. Like the, Danger. And it's been downhill ever since. Yeah. But, uh, but and also, like, but now, with all of this Occupy stuff, it's really enlightened my sensitivity and my awareness, you know? Like, if you buy a, you know, a car, you see that car everywhere. I've been noticing, if you walk around town, I've been noticing every ad on the subway, the buses, on the billboard, like everything is Citibank, Chase, this and that. Every single thing is a bank, MasterCard, Visa. Um, even, even things that you don't think are banks yeah. are banks. They're uh, the <laughs> schools because of student loans. They're, they're pushing student loans like crazy. Yeah. You know, we can get financing for this school, that school, the other school. No, and I, tra I travel a lot around the country, and somebody recently pointed out to me, like, why is the biggest building in every downtown oh, the yeah. bank? The bank and, and then the insurance company. And I started paying company. attention to that, and they're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a little, and it used to be the factories. Right. Right? I now mean, there aren't any factories. Our, it used to be our, you know, I mean, to mm -hmm. some extent still we have universities, but I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. a changing landscape and it is, yeah. uh, it's The sad. bank, the insurance companies, then if there's a pharmaceutical company in town, and then the old church, which is abandoned and, you know, they're trying to keep the, keep it, you know, the 1929 building, they don't know what to do with it, yeah. Yeah. yeah Hopefully crazy, they don't turn them into banks, although a lot of churches oh. go the way of banks too. <laughs> like you say, that's a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother show. So, well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm it's sorry we don't have more time. Great. This is great, though. We'll thanks for having me on. For sure. We'll yeah. have to do it again. Fun conversation. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>